In order to create an event for instant replay or slow motion playback, you must be recording all of the cameras that are connected to the three play system. To start the recording process, simply hit the record button right on the control surface. All cameras attached to the three play are now being recorded. You can also stop the recording process manually, but this does require that you hold down the Alt key and press the record button. This means you can't inadvertently hit the record button during a live production and stop the recording process. When you start the recording process from the control surface, you'll see the record button here on the interface light up. You also get a readout for how long you've been recording during the current session and the time left on the disc. This is also an interface control for starting and stopping the record process. Now that you're recording all of the cameras attached to your three play system, you're ready to start creating events for instant replay and slow motion playback. Now, an event is a slice in time of all of the cameras that you have connected to your system that are being recorded. We have eight inputs coming into this three play A20 and we're recording all of them at the same time. So when you create an event by marking an in point and an out point, you're going to get eight clips. You're going to get that slice of time from all eight cameras that are being recorded. Let's take a look. To create an event, we need to be able to preview our cameras. Now, we have the small preview windows here, but you can also preview any live camera on either of the two independent outputs. We'll go ahead and select output A, and that's the one we're going to be using. And now you can change what camera you're previewing by using the P1 through 4 keys. This will be camera 1, camera 2, camera 3, and camera 4. To get to the next four cameras, you hold down the Alt key. P1 is now camera 5, P2 is camera 6, P3 is camera 7, and P4 is camera 8. Now that you're previewing the camera angle that you're going to use for creating your instant replays, let's go ahead and create an event. To create an event, simply hit the in button. If you forgot to start the recording process before you tried to create the first event, hitting the in button will automatically start the record process for you. Once the event or the play is over, hit the out button to complete that event. To access this event, hit the clip list button. The last angle you were looking at is now selected and you can select any camera angle by holding down the Alt key and using the left and right arrows to select the different camera angles that you want to use. Once you've got your camera angle selected, it's ready for playback. Of course, you can play back any angle of the event at normal speed, but 3Play820 includes world-class interpolated slow motion that you can control either by using the T-bar or the speed presets. If you want to start playing back at a slower speed, you can simply select that speed from one of our speed presets and hit the play button and the play will start playing at your selected speed. I'm going to stop and I'm going to hit the stop button a second time and that will reset that replay back to its starting point for me. The other option is to start the play happening and then to dynamically control the speed of the play by using the T-bar. We can now pull the T-bar back, we can slow the action down, we can speed it up, all dynamically using the T-bar. Nutex 3Play820 features two independent video outputs. So while we're playing back one camera angle of an event from one of the outputs, you can be setting up another camera angle for playback in the other output. Let's take a look. So on output A, we're playing back our slow motion event, and we'll go ahead and slow that down a little bit. And then we'll select output B. Take that to the clip list, and now select a secondary camera angle that you might want to use. Once you've got that set up, we're back on A, we let that play finish, and then as soon as that play is done, we can go to B and start the playback on B. The switcher can switch between those two inputs, giving you a nice dissolve between two camera angles. And again, you've got eight camera angles to choose from. During playback of a clip, the heads-up display on your output monitor shows you a lot more information than you get when you're in the live mode. We'll go ahead and start this event playing and you can see on our heads up display that we're controlling output A, 
that the T-bar is set to 99%, and if I bring that T-bar back, we get a dynamic representation of where the T-bar is. We also have time code information for the clip displayed down here, showing us how much time we have left in the clip before it's going to end. And of course, it's showing us that we're playing a clip. It shows us the event number and the camera angle that's being played back. During a live production, you can end up with a large amount of events that you need to be able to manage. And 3Play820 gives you a few tools to be able to do this. First of all, the clip list has four banks, and each bank is made up of four pages. This is a way for you to instantly get a brand new clip list that you can start populating with different clips, allowing you to organize all of your events and clips quickly and easily. The banks and pages for the clip list can also be accessed directly from the control surface, simply by using the P buttons and the Alt key. Now, the P buttons by themselves will switch the pages for the bank that you currently have selected. To select a new bank, hold down the Alt button. And of course, P1 is bank 1, P2 is bank 2, P3 is bank 3, and P4 is bank 4. Again, once you have the bank selected, pressing those buttons without the Alt key takes you to the pages within that bank. Every clip in the clip list can be labeled, and then all of the clips can be searched using a keyword filter. To label a clip, simply select the clip. Now, to select clips, you can select events from the control surface by using the left and right arrow keys. And this is going to take us up and down through the clip list, selecting the events. Once you have the appropriate event selected, to select the clip from that event, you hold down the Alt key. And again, use the left and right arrow buttons. Now you will travel left and right across the clip list. Once you have a clip selected and you want to give it a label, Simply hit F2 on your keyboard, and you're ready to go ahead and type in. Once you've got clips labeled, they can easily be searched using a keyword. You've got your keyword search filter box right here. I'm going to type in SAC, and all of the clips that have SAC in their label, or any event actually that has SAC in the label of any clip, now shows up, and I have instant access to it. To get rid of this selection, simply hit the X and the entire clip list will be redisplayed. Nutex 3 Play 820 will allow you to import external content for use in your live production playback. This could be commercials or bumpers or even audio clips that you might want to use during a highlight reel playback. Now you can add these external content clips directly to the clip list for use during your live production. Click the Add button to open the requester, and this will show you all of the content that you loaded via the Sessions page by importing external content. This could have been video clips, still images, or even audio files. Got a couple of video clips here. I'm going to select one and click OK, and it instantly gets added to my clip list. Notice that each camera angle is the same playback because you're just loading a single clip for use so it's duplicated on every camera angle in the clip list. There are several ways of creating events inside of 3Play820, and each way has its own benefit. Now, the first way is to hit the in and the out point like we already looked at, but another way is to create an event by only hitting the out point. Let's go ahead back to a live display. I'm going to select output A and click on live, and I now see the live camera coming in. And again, if I want to make an event without hitting an in point, I can just hit the out point, And it will jump back a specified amount of time. So again, I'm going to go ahead and let this happen. And if I just hit out, it creates an event for me. And it jumped back four seconds in time. Now, if you want to adjust the amount of time it's going to jump back, you can click on the little gear in the upper right-hand corner of the clip list and you've got one button marking configuration pop up here allowing you to choose the amount of time it's going to jump back and create the endpoint for you automatically. There may be times where you want to create an event that does not have an out point. You may want the event to continue to roll from your instant replay and allow the director to tell you when to come out of the event. 
Well, to do this, we need to create an event that has no out point. Simply hit the in point, and an event is created in the clip list. Now, you can access that event while you're still recording. No out point has been set. You can choose a camera angle and start playback. You can control the speed of the playback using the T-bar or the speed presets, and that event will continue to roll as there is no out point. Once you're finished with the instant replay and you're ready to create another event, simply hit the out point to finish that event and you're ready to create the next one. There is also a way to create an instant replay on the fly without ever creating an event in the clip list. While the three play is in record mode, simply wait for the action to happen. And while the action is happening, at any point in time, you can grab the jog shuttle wheel and you can give it one quarter turn. I now have control over the action and I can back it up and I can manually select my endpoint. I can play it back. I can dynamically control the speed of the playback. And I can stop it, but no event has been created in the clip list. Working with eight inputs into the Instant Replay slow motion system can create a lot of information within the clip list that you need to be able to deal with. And you may not be using eight cameras. Because of that, there is a way to further customize the interface to match your production needs. The yellow buttons here, just above the clip list, allow you to modify the clip list to match your production needs. If you only happen to be using six cameras, you can turn eight and seven off. This now will just display the six camera angles that you happen to be using, and you don't have to see the camera displays for seven and eight if you're not using them. Using the clip list inside of 3Play820 allows you to easily create, manage, organize, and search any clip from any event.